Thank you for tuning in to the reading produced by Black Spectrum Network. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell button to get the latest updates on this channel. If you want to receive these and other videos at least one week ahead of their YouTube release date, then subscribe to our Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Black Spectrum Network. We offer online courses that teach how to do tarot, how to create magical potions, and how to work with your ancestors, deities, and African diasporic spirits. Visit the Shrine of Black Epistemology at blackepistemology.com. If you like mentorship with one of our staff, then book a mentorship consultation at www.blackspectrumnetwork.com. I want to let everybody know that on February the 15th, I am going to be starting my mentorship program where I'm going to be teaching tarot and astrology. It is a 12-week course, so if you're interested in receiving an application from me, then text 901-350-0602. If you're interested in mentoring under Reverend Priestess Oshun from K, then go to the website and text her as well. So we're going to go ahead and begin this reading on Kobe Bryant, starting with his personality analysis. So Kobe Bryant uh, died yesterday in a helicopter crash, and um, I was supposed to do a reading on the same day, but... <clears throat> I'm still recovering from a sickness, so I'm going to go ahead and um, do it today and upload this video as soon as possible. So the first card that I get for Kobe's personality is the card for the night. This card is speaking about him being uh, this card is speaking about uh, him as a. Uh, it, it speaks about him in multiple different arenas. So the first arena that is talking about is him as um, him um, on the court or as an athlete, him being a knight, someone that comes to your rescue when you really need it. I, I don't watch sports, um, but he's someone that comes to your rescue when you really need it. He also was someone that honored the the, uh, the basketball as a sport um, and as a lifestyle. Um, with him being the night card, I see that he was uh, someone that uh, he was a, a key player. Um, in a lot of the the strategies that they use to win. In addition to that, with him being the knight, this could also indicate that he was someone that was very self-centered or known for being selfish. Um, he also could have had an allegiance to a team, um, one that may uh, in his allegiance to a team could have he, he was very prideful in that team. Um, and I also see with him being the knight, it, it indicates that he was known for because he loved the team so much through osmosis and just because his and through osmosis and because his love for his team was was contagious. I see this as um, his love spread throughout the team. So. Um, his team uh, mate, his teammates uh, loved whatever team they played for more because they were playing with him. The night card is also talking about him as a romantic partner. Um, it's saying that he uh, was someone that was uh, he he was. Um, a, a, a stereotypical romantic with the heart, uh, with the chocolates, the flowers, um, the text messages. Uh, he is someone that. Um, I guess you could say was very uh, mechanical or robotic in the way that he would love someone that his his he he served he he um, he served people. Um, I, I get the acts of service was was his strongest love language and um, giving gifts was another uh, love language and receiving gifts was one of his love languages as well. And I see that he um, he, he showed he uh, illustrated that love language with his teammates as well. Um, the next card that I get for Kobe Bryant is the storyteller, which is talking about Kobe Bryant being um, him. Him uh, is speaking about him being a very eloquent speaker, um, him having a, a, a broad vocabulary. It also speaks about him um, being someone that was um, uh, an uh, astute in his knowledge and um, very self-aware, a great interviewer. And someone that, uh, uh, as a storyteller talks about, is it's very self explained I mean, it it's on its, you know, it's very explicit. Like, he actually was a storyteller. I don't get that he was a, a talkaholic, but he was someone that, that spoke through story um, or through parable. Um, I get that he was also, at some point in his life, I don't know if he died um, religious, but I've, I get that he was someone that would repeat or recite things that he had learned through church and learning through those stories. And a lot of those stories that uh, about victory and triumph um, that were 
preached about in the pulpit, he allowed those stories to influence him when he was on the court. So if he was down and out and the shot clock said two seconds, he felt that he could make the most out of those two seconds so that God would make something move or something shake in his favor. So he had an unwavering faith um, because of the stories. He had an unwavering faith in himself and his athletic abilities because of the stories that he would hear from others about this almighty God that could really change things for people. Um, and he believed that he was one of those people that God could change things for this. The card for the poet, again, is talking about his romantic prowess and is speaking about um, him, again, being a great orator and him being someone that spoke from the heart. Not He wasn't someone that was overly emotional, but you could tell that he was passionate about um, what he's what he spoke about. And he was very careful with his word choice, not in the way that he was being. um he was being trained uh, by his PR team, but with him as the poet is is more so saying that he could use his he could use his um, words as a sort of lyrical gift um, to keep people hanging on to every word, and that he is going to uh, that he was known for being uh, someone that was just a great interviewer and um, an all around um, intelligent man as. as um, the car for the hermit is not speaking about him um, being a loner. The car for the hermit is speaking about him being a person, uh, him being someone that's incredibly creative. He, I get that, that he practiced alone a lot. And I get that he would watch, um, he would watch himself play over and over and try to figure out what his strengths and weaknesses were so that he could better himself on the court with him as the um, uh, as a hermit card here. It speaks about him um, focusing on solitude so that he could download it, receive spiritual downloads that would tell him how to improve upon these other areas of his life. Now, um, the hermit card is a powerful card for an athlete, being that he's someone that's in the public eye, but he would still take time out to um, he would still take time to himself to just be alone, to to meditate and to allow for spirit to really guide him in uh, to, to, to to truly guide him. Um, I'm not saying that he was the most spiritual person person meaning that he was a spiritual guru and and could could be a teacher but i i get from his energy that he had to be alone to draw on those creative talents or to come up with very um unique uh plays um on the court the next card that i get is the card for the gossip the car for the gossip is saying that he had a huge disdain for gossip. He was a very private person. He was careful of who he was very careful whom he um, allowed his um, his inner whom he shared his innermost feelings and thoughts with. Um, I, I get that his wife was his his, his best friend and that he um, trusted her. I don't think that he trusted his teammates too much i get that he had a homeboy relationship with them but i don't feel like he wanted to share with them his um uh, most deep insecurities only because he liked the way that they uh saw him and he wanted to be able to keep that persona up um he knows that the media would thrive on um the power of passing on information about him so he would try to he tried his best to keep his personal life private i see a lot of nda um agreements i see um i see that he had people um, in between him, like it's like you, you, he would say something to his manager. His manager would say something to his publicist. His publicist may say something to the publicist assistant. Is there was a chain of command. Um, so you never got the you would never get an original Kobe Bryant statement if it was written. It was originally from Kobe Bryant. Okay. Um, I also get that he he does he doesn't like to share. Um, a lot about his personal life, such as if he would have written an autobiography, he would have been very, um, it would have been contrived. The card for the king shows up, which is talking about him as a leader. This speaks about him as a leader um, amongst his team and saying that he um, he did a lot for them in terms of uh, 
in terms of uh, helping them to provide them with fame, um, ne- helping them to negotiate their contracts. I see him helping younger players as well. Um, and when this talks about benevolent leadership with the King card, it's speaking about him being a, a, an older brother to the an older brother to the team. And even um, nearing his retirement, I get that he was mentoring newer players. And even now, I, I get that there are people. I get that there are some people that he he was known for mentoring. Um, I, I I don't get that he was someone that wanted to um, keep his knowledge to himself. The card for the damsel is saying that he was attracted to situations where people had to rely on him and see him as a knight. Um, it. He was someone that was very independent. Um, it the damsel card is not talking about him. This speaks about um, what he was motivated by. So he he liked to serve. He liked to feel needed. He liked to see his talents make um, actual improvements in other people's lives. He liked to see his advice make improvements in other people's lives. The car for the child eternal is speaking about him being um, him having a, a college aged attitude all the time. So he um, always had the mind of a college student or the energy of a college student being someone that was able to see things with fresh eyes. And and um, he was also a very responsible person, but not someone that was aging in his mind. So when he he died, he still had this very youthful energy. He could um, keep up with uh, the new music new dances he was um very hip to what it is that his children were talking about listening to and he was very familiar with the current state of the sports industry he was not someone that needed to be updated um, by other people the card for the goddess is also not talking about him. This is not talking about his femininity, but but it's talking about his natural attraction for um, his natural attraction for feminine women, women that were very sensual, curvaceous women that loved to love. Um, and he uh, and that's what he went for. So these are going to be some attributes that we find in his wife. Um not so much attributes that we find in him. Um, the goddess card is also talking about him exploiting the female nature and the female form. What this means is that Kobe Bryant, um, Kobe Bryant, the, the women that he dealt with, whether they were uh, side chicks or not, were very feminine and um, women that um, had a damsel attitude. Um, so he was known for giving money, maybe giving cars, things of that nature to women. Um, even even with his wife, uh, she she uh, had she was dependent upon him, especially with him being a king. Um, he he's someone that um, he's someone that you you he he had eyes everywhere. He always knew what was going on with his finances in his relationships with his children. There is nothing that he did not know at any time. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> the first question that I'm going to ask, what was it like for Kobe Bryant to grow up as a child of a great NBA player? <clears throat> What was it like for him to grow up as a child of a great NBA player? All right. So what I can see from the arithmetic of these cards, um, he was inspired from he was inspired from his father's uh, career, um, and he was he was happy, incredibly happy to be the child of a great NBA player. Um, I get that 
now, now this is something I don't know for a fact, but I'm getting, I'm hearing that it's if you're a child of a great NBA player, it's hard for you to live up to those standards. But if you're the child of an okay NBA player, it's more likely that you'll be great. Um, maybe Kobe Bryant is an anomaly in that regard, but um, his ta- his talents aren't through his father. His talents are actually through his mother's bloodline. Is what the cars are showing. Um, I get from this that. Um, Kobe Bryant was Kobe Bryant was a, Kobe Bryant was a prodigy. Like at a very young age, he he expressed a um, a lot of um, uh, physical dexterity, um, and um, I get that he was very fast, um, very intelligent. Um, I get that he played a lot of uh, he played with puzzles too, or he played puzzle oriented games. He um, like like chess. So, and I, I I get that he did those things with his father. He also watched his father play on the court. Uh, he watched a lot of sports, and I just see I just see here that he was someone that said to himself, "If I ever, when, if or when I ever have the time to get on the court, this is what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to make this play. If someone does this to me, I'm going to maneuver in this way and um, guard myself or trip them up." I get that he studied as much as he could. He he really he he studied this sport as though it was a science, and he also studied it historically. He studied the rules and trying to figure out how it was that you could bend them. Um, what I'm receiving, the information I'm receiving from these cars is that he he had a um, a destiny that was uh, that was that that was going to happen. Um, Anyway, it's like there are a lot of people that are born that could be great NBA players, but um, his destiny was meant to happen. So um, I get from him the energy of a prodigy. But especially with this Empress Empress card here in the house of organization, this is what's telling me that it was through his through his mother's uh, bloodline that he is guaranteed his success. His father may have given him a skill set. But his ability to refine it, to use it, to master it, to make it profitable, that comes through his mother. When he was in when he was in high school, he played basketball all the time and I get that even in college he had a tough he he was he didn't he had a tough time juggling college and basketball did he graduate because these cars indicate graduation um so i get that he he has a degree along with being a a great nba player um i see that he met his um his his wife while he was in college um so they they have a soulmate relationship with each other um again i don't know anything about sports but i think that he was probably a top pick as indicated by this uh by the car for valor in the house of the outcome um but for him growing up it was his mother that told him that he would be great and and he gleaned from her um his father of course encouraged it and pushed for that but it was his it, it was through his mother that that he was made great um, I see him being someone that was, that's very inspired by how it is that um, his mother spoke to him. And I get that without the, the tutelage or the rearing of his mother that he would not be where he is. It, it, everything is through his mom's bloodline. These cars are saying that he wanted to he wanted to he wanted to be pushed to become who he was. Um I don't get a Joe Jackson vibe from either of his parents, but he had he worked himself like his conscience is 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 so um was almost patronizing towards him in a Joe Jackson sort of way. So I get that he felt like he had to he had to um be on the court all the time as much as possible. Like when I get out of school and I do my homework, I've got to get back on the court. Um he 
he took he took sports incredibly seriously especially in high school this was like life or death for him and i even see it as as he would beat himself up some days shirt he would come home with his shirt drenched in sweat just because he was trying to um perfect a certain technique um i also get but i just really get that he had i i don't know anything about sports but i really do get the uh, like a ball hog um because of the way he trained himself, like he he hogged the ball a lot, um, and and maybe um, I don't know what his his dad's record is like, but I don't I, f- I feel like that that's an attribute of his father as well. Um, now I want to know what influenced Kobe Bryant to learn so many languages. Um, what this is saying is that, um, uh, I get that he wanted to do international business and I also get that he had a knack for traveling. He felt like, he felt like he couldn't, he felt like there were people always communicating around him or above him. I get that he was someone that felt like he had to learn the language of finance first or the language of money and then learn, um, um, the layman's language, you know, the uh, everyday language. Like, first, let me become financially literate and then learn layman's language and I can do international business. I get that he did it because he wanted, not only because he wanted to stand out, because um, he felt like it was a wise thing, it was a wise decision for him to make in regards to being able to collaborate with people. Um, I get that he wanted to have money from inter- through international endorsements as well. Um, and, I, and I see that uh, with the car for gain here in the House of Hidden Advantages, he felt like with each and each language that he learned, it, it doubled his earning potential. And that's very true because the car for success is success is what follows as his outcome with with the um, house in his house of the greatest spiritual challenges it indicates like um, mental restrictions. So for some reason, he felt like without him knowing um, other people's languages, he he was going to be restricted um, as a businessman. And this is him doing research into those languages. Um, these cars, these cars are saying that, um, these cars are saying that, um, he used these languages to, to read, um, old text as well. So he was also reading books, um, and studying different forms of spirituality. So I wouldn't be surprised if he read, um, like if he, for example, he knew Turkish and then he read, um, a Turkish translation of the bible you know what i mean um he was someone that just enjoyed knowledge and was a connoisseur of like an anthropological connoisseur of culture um a the the core reason as to why he wanted to learn these languages was because he was interested on another level it it would help him to become a better businessman and the sorts of endorsements that he could receive because he knew these languages would be different and help and and unique um i just get that he wanted to he wanted to carve out his own lane um and this is what's coming to me. It's also that he wanted to appear to be, um, when I say unique, he wanted, and this has to do with his, his blackness where he didn't want, um, he didn't, he, he wanted, he, 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 he knew that white people like white Americans only know English typically. And so he felt that he was a cut above the white American financially and educationally and linguistically because of that as well 
Um, so I, I, I get that there was a slight superiority complex that he had, too. I want to know what made his relationship work with Vanessa Bryant before the affairs. Now, I know this question assumes that, you know, he wasn't cheating from the beginning, but the cards will tell us if he was cheating from the beginning of the relationship. Okay, he was cheating from the beginning of the relationship. The first card that came out was a card for debauchery. So there were there he was I mean, the affairs were always there. And here's the Emperor card speaking to his king personality. Um What I mean, what made things work were were that he he provided for the he provided uh for for uh, his 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 wife or girlfriend at the time, um, with her showing up as the king, of, uh, the the queen of cups. It's talking about, um, it's talking about her emotions. So she was she's she was clingy. Um, I get that he liked that, but I also get that he was very methodical in how he went about dealing with her too. So, um, I get that what made their relationship work. <clears throat> What made their relationship work during the affairs was were that she endured it um, and that she would cling to him regardless. And he knew this. So, I mean, it's not really like he tried to make it work. It was just kind of like he was he knew that at the end of the day that she was not going to go anywhere and that, that she was going to be devoted to him. So he exploited her loyalty um, and he kept her happy. Um, that's another thing that I see here in his house of hidden advantages. Um, there was nothing that was going to, uh, get her to, to break up with him. So they were going to make it work regardless, especially because, um, the emperor card is here in this, this, um, house of personal truth and inner answers. And right now this is screaming to me to be a millionaire card. So it, it's about the fact that he was cheating on her. I mean, if they were college sweet college sweethearts, he was cheating on her. She he got into the draft. I mean, and then she's kind of like she hit the lick. But I I don't get that he felt the need to stop the affairs. I I don't I don't I don't see anything in these cards indicating a will to stop. The card for sorrow here in the best path to take is only telling me that um she could cry tears and she could um complain about it but when you stay it you know it's like at the end of the day she's just she she continued to stay that's the thing and he he knew that she wasn't going to go anywhere and i and i get that he wasn't going to allow her to go anywhere either regardless of him having the affairs so now i want to know after the affairs became public what made their relationship work Um, you know, after the affairs became public, it's like there was a re-engagement in the relationship. Um, he re-engaged the relationship. He, um, promised to have more children with her. Um, but the, the affairs never stopped. Um, I get that they went through, a um, I get, I do get, that they went through a, a series of counseling sessions, um, at, after the affairs became public, um, there was a pause, you know, at some point where he was monogamous, but, um, just, I, I see here that I just see here that this is a part of, this is just a natural part of the karma that he was always he always wanted more. He was always seeking more. He he wanted what he had, and then he wanted more. For her, I I don't get that she. I don't get that she was always faithful herself either. I don't get that she just 
took it. I don't get that she just uh, 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 she just allowed him to just step out. I do get that she had her fun as well when she could, but she tried her best to remain loyal. But the thing is, is that they are best friends. Um, and I think that they were very open with each other. I get that she 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 just knew she was she I get from Vanessa Bryan's energy that she's like, you know, she's a part of a circle of women where they knew what was going on and they would it was a support group where they would cry and talk about it and they would work through it and, and hope for better. But they but they also knew at some point, you know, these guys have to stop. They, they're going to chill out they're going to settle down things will fizzle out you know um they're you know they're going to run out of steam or they're going to run out of cum at some point in their lives but at the same time um he provided for her to such a degree that i get that she just it's it's like what you know how much can i complain um and, and if i do complain what am i complaining about is 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 what i is what i see her having to ask herself um after an argument with him um because he was manip manipulative um these cars are saying that good sex also kept them together as well because she, she liked the way he put that dick down um there was a lot of prayer that they did they had a spiritual counselor a spiritual advisor some woman um but for the most part, I see a lot of family members encouraging them to just stay together for the children. I want to know, did Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal make up? Hit the skull emoji if you are enjoying this reading. They call me Brian and Shaquille O'Neal makeup. Yes, they did. Um, I don't know why they fell out. I don't. I don't. I don't keep up with sports. Okay, but um. It, it, yes, they did, and it was it was um, Kobe Bryant can be petty. I get that Shaquille O'Neal was trying to be the bigger person, but also I get that Kobe Bryant treated Shaquille O'Neal as though he was dumb sometimes. Um, I get that Kobe could Kobe was perhaps a, a, a much more quick witted and a, um, and could think more quickly on his feet as, as far as conversation goes. I get a, a slower energy from Shaquille, but not sl like a slow person. Like I, I, I get, I get intelligence from both of them, but one that works in different ways, uh, uh, two different ways. Um, I, I get that they had a falling out over money and over women. Um, as well. And I get that. And I, and I, yeah. And there, there is a, there is a, there are several women that they had falling outs over and those things um, may have shown up as uh, on the court um, and, and in terms of them playing very differently um, with each other. I, 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 uh, and when I say playing differently, meaning that there were sometimes there was a natural synergy between the two of them and they could synchronize plays. But then other times they were completely off. Um, I get that Kobe was Kobe has the the Kobe is the. Is is um, I get Shaquille is is like Pinky and um, Kobe's brain, the brain, but they needed one another to to work. Um, well, Shaquille needed Kobe more than Shaquille needed Kobe more than Kobe needed Shaquille, and I I know that I I'm hearing that Kobe knew this. They did make up. Um, a lot of this has to, had to do with ego and things being said. I I get that there was a friendship between them. Um. Things soured. I I mean, as they gotten older, they uh, they they have learned to 
uh, truly appreciate each other and to have more of a union than a friendship and the, um, and, and to appreciate one another's is legacy. Um, let me see. Um, these cards indicate that it was a, it, it was a, um, it was a woman. Um, and this woman, this woman's mixed race. It's a mixed race woman that worked to put the two back together to get them back in cahoots with each other. Cause they really did have a love for one another as teammates. I don't get that these two would have been friends if it weren't for, um, um, them having mutual interest in sports. I get that they are just oil and water. Uh, one likes video games and the other likes to milk goats, for example. They're just two different energies. But um, for the most part, I see that the falling outs were because of Kobe um, saying things to pick at Shaquille. And then I get that Shaquille also had a temper as well. Um and, and and that's just what I see for the most part. But I I, I get that they actually did make up. Um, they they did make up with each other. Um, uh, how did Kobe Bryant? How does Kobe Bryant view um, the NBA? Um, well, how did he view the NBA now versus when he was a player? So we're just going to um, pull the top row of cards for um, when he was playing in the NBA. The bottom row of cards will indicate when he was um, retired. Um, when he was in the NBA, he felt like there was um, a he felt like there was a greater um, emphasis on sportsmanship. Um, he also feels like. Um, he also feels like their things were a lot more serious and competitive back then. He feels like there were very that the things that they did during his time were quite iconic, and he feels like although there are icons in the 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 current uh, sports uh, in the current sports culture, there just aren't enough iconic things happening. He feels like he feels like now um, his energy right now, this car for Dominion is talking about um, things behind the scenes. So he feels that sometimes the uh, the playoffs or the NBA championships are rigged or that the, the, the people are chosen. Um, he feels that there is I do get conspiracy theory vibes from his current understanding of sports it, but back then he feels he he very much felt like things were not um how do i say this that back then he feels as though if he ended up at the playoffs they 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 earned it versus now where those things are chosen he, he feels like these things are chosen and he um is also questioning the amount of money that's being pumped into certain players or um certain teams he feels like there's a uh rules have changed to make things to to make things appear fair but and when i say appear fair he feels like that he like equal opportunity, giving everybody equal opportunity to win. There were rules that were implemented to get to make people win, but he feels like that was just that the, that was a farce. Like what 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 really happened was there are people behind the scenes betting um, on their team winning, and whoever wins those bets, their teams get to move forward. Um, Again, I get conspiracy conspiracy vibes from like how he feels about it now. So I don't really know much of where that comes from. Um, now I want to know um, how did Kobe feel about being black 
in America. I want to know how you all feel about being black in America. Do you all feel good being black in America? You know, is it a great time to be alive? Especially with President Donald Trump as our current president. Um, one second. Um, he felt, he feels like he was targeted because of his blackness. Um, he feels like he was targeted, um, in the media because of his blackness and he, and he didn't, but at the same time, he doesn't feel like his blackness was an obstacle for him that he had to overcome. He feels like he had to just be an, uh, an awesome player in general. Um, I do get that he was shocked by the, the, the state of social affairs in the United States sometimes, but, um, for the most part, I see that he wanted to just keep race from being a topic of conversation um in a way I, I i get that he was someone that was more action oriented than discussion oriented when it when it comes to race so he was more about um hiring um uh hiring black people um giving back to black people educating young black people um i i get from I get from these cars that he submerged himself as much as he could in other cultures because he felt like he was always black and he was always in black culture. Um, and he was around black people as you know, particularly his teammates, but I don't, I, I don't get that there was this huge and there was a, a, a an, an, an embrace of a halo of blackness, like a, a pro blackness. Like a, a, but I do get there was a black pride, but I don't get that there was a huge expression of pro blackness from him. Um, he knew that at any point in time that because he was black, his life could be turned upside down. Like he could be shot randomly by a police officer or mistaken for the wrong person. Those are things that he did know and did not take for granted. But because he focuses much more on career success um, and he chooses to see the, the cup half full rather than half empty, um, his feelings towards being a black man in America are ones in which he feels that he had to pave the way for a lot of people. He's just like, I just have to pay the way for a lot of people. I have to be a great icon and a great role model. And that's really all that I can do. Um, one thing that he did not like was he did not like African-Americans participating in forms of physical violence. Um, I get that he appreciated um, nonviolence movements. Um, and I, I also get that he was um, he was a lot more MLK than he was Malcolm X. But I, I do see that with white with white people, he did feel as though he had to take time to recharge from them and to not be around them sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want we're going to see um, uh, somebody asked a question about his parents, too. So we're going to look and see. Um, did he reconcile things with his parents? Hit the skull emoji if you are enjoying this reading. I know this reading is very long. It is going to be two parts. And if you're interested in enrolling in my mentorship program um, to learn how to read tarot and how to do astrology, text 901-350-0602 or send us an email and I will send you an application. All right. So um, with he and his parents, um, there is I don't I don't know if this is his mother, but this this indicates like illness that um, his mother may have uh, become ill at a certain point and um, they're they did have a heart to heart with one another. Um, 
I feel like he was I, I get that um Kobe was um not close to his not close to his parents because of them always asking for money and um I get that they were supportive of him but I I, I also get I also get that living in a two parent household where um he didn't he felt like his parents were against him like if his dad said if his dad said not to do something, his mom would agree to agree with his dad, even if his dad was being a tyrant. He didn't feel like his his voice was heard. Um, and because of that, I get that Kobe um, would act out by making reckless decisions. Um, there was a lot of yelling and arguing between them. And, and there was actual you know, there were physical altercations between Kobe and his father. Um, I get that he felt like college was. Um, college or the NBA where sports was going to be his way of getting away from them. But um, because he, be he was such a great player, he actually became a lot like his father. And I, I feel like there was some um, resent. There's resentment that he holds towards his father because his father was such a great athlete where he's like, you know, with you being such a great athlete, you think that you'd be a great role model to me as a, a, a you, you're a great role model to all of these other people out here, all these other little kids. But here it is for me. You 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 won't. You won't allow me to have my freedom. You want to somewhat diminish me um, and you're you are controlling. Um, again, things in Kobe's life turning upside down or right side up. Um, so I get that as far as reconciling with his parents, things could really be up or down depending on what he feels. But um, they are older and I get that he has chose like he would ch oftentimes just choose the higher road, which is just to um, be silent or um, submit to them rather than trying to push back at things and just overall just trying to be supportive. Um, but at the same time. Um, but at the same time, I just I just get that. Uh, Kobe, Kobe had to treat his parents like, you know, look, y'all, y'all, y'all is just going to be my, like at this point, I need y'all to take care of my grandkids, uh, take care of your grandkids, talk to them. Um, but please just give me my space, allow for me to be a man. Um, and I, I feel like it took him maybe up until his late twenties for him to establish very clear boundaries with them. Like, you know, this is who I am. This is what you can call me for. And this is how you can talk to me. And this is, you, you can't. Do you can't talk to me like this anymore? Um, so yeah, dun dun dun. Now we're going to get into the really big questions that you know you all have about Kobe Bryant. All right, so we're going to ask, um, what happened to Kobe Bryant two hours prior to his death? What do you all think happened? Put it in the comments. I want I want as much dialogue and discussion as possible. What do y'all think happened to Kobe Bryant? All right, so um, this is the Jesus Christ card. So fuel my fire. 